Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tony Cho. Welcome to Professor Hall's Retirement Virtual Webinar. Today, our topic is Fundamentals of Rhinoplasty, presented by Professor Somo Sinji. Somo Sinji is a professor in the Otolangaji Department at the Iskarasia Osmakas University Medical Faculty, Turkey. He graduated from the School of Medicine, Istanbul University in 1984, and then entered the Otto Residency Program at the Anadolu University, became a specialist in ENT and the head neck in 1919. He was appointed Associate Professor in 1995 and a Professor in 2001. 2030, he became the specialist of a mouse face and the chin surgery. He was the chair of the ENT session of the European Academy of a Large Clinic Immunology, EAACI, and the president of the Asian Facial Plastic Surgery Society, AFPSS. He has more than 300 published papers and 30 books. He is an editor board member for several journals. He is the ENT series editor of a stranger. Now, here's his speech. Oh. Dear colleagues, greetings from Turkey. I would like to start my presentation showing where we live in Turkey. We are just close to Ankara in the middle of the country, away from the seasides. Although three sides of Turkey are covered by sea, unfortunately, I'm living in Eskisher, which is away from sea, but we are happy. It's my pleasure uh, to take part in this webinar series to just support my friend. We didn't spend so much time together, but we have written many chapters for many books together. In scientific books, many unrelated chapters follow each other. Retirement is the beginning of a new chapter in your life story. You are starting a new life different from the one you had before. I wish you lots of fun and happiness with your loved ones in your new chapter. Enjoy it. I would like to speak about fundamentals of rhinoplasty. I did more than 10,000 rhinoplasties during the last 35 years. When we look up at the dictionary, the meaning of rhinoplasty is written as plastic surgery on the nose. But for us as otorhinolaryngologists, what we understand from the word rhinoplasty is initially make the nose functionally better and make the nose aesthetically better. Shorter, longer, smaller, bigger, but fancier than before. But the appearance is, although it's very important, making the nose functionally better should be our first, uh, first target. What is beauty? It is certainly not true that there is in the mind of man any universal standard of beauty with respect to the human body. This is the, the, the words of Charles Darwin. Another definition is coming from the movie Sir Aaron Spelling. He said, can't define it, but you know it when it walks into the room. Maybe this is a better definition. 
As some of you may know, I do a lot of paintings, sculptures beside my rhinoplasty surgery. Before starting to a painting or a sculpture, we need to learn its structure very well. And then imagine what we will do. Decide what to do and stepwise plan it and then do it. This is something very similar in rhinoplasty surgery. Preoperative analysis and planning is the most important part of the work. What is the problem with this nose? We have to decide and find out the problem of that particular nose. Which nose will fit this face? Because there are so many ethnic characteristics. Which procedure will be better in this case for this particular patient and for this surgeon, for you? Everybody learn many uh, ways to do rhinoplasty, different sutures, grafts, but you cannot achieve a wonderful results in all of them. So try to pick one that you will do successfully. You will end up with a good result. So you need to choose the uh, way of doing it. This is a very famous uh, painting, the name is Commander. And in, when you look at the nose, it has a character. I just changed the nose. How about the, it's his character now? Let's see them together. I destroyed the character. So think twice before doing any change. Another sample, it's a painting from Van Gogh. See the nose, I just modified the nose. Look, this is a better nose and I didn't, I didn't destroy the character. One more, let's see together and the, another step. Now I just destroyed the character of the nose. So when we look at them, three of them together, the first is the original, the second is the modified one after rhinoplasty, and the third one is a, a third step that I did, but I didn't like it when I go back and have a look. I gave many courses on clay for the preparation of the surgeons, and it's also published as a supplement of uh, facial plastic surgery clinics. Teaching 3D sculpting to facial plastic surgeons is a very important concept. This course was, uh, uh, they had two parts. Part one is sculpturing the nose on clay. Clay is nothing, you can use it, destroy it. And try to, the first step is try to make the best nose for this face. Try to do your best. And then try to make your ideal nose, not related to this, but the way that you think, the way that you like. And try anything you want that you cannot try on a patient. At the second step of this course, I give statues without noses to the participants and ask them to add a nose and adding noses to different sculptures will increase their learning uh, will serve to the aim the aim of the course is learning nasal ratios improving aesthetic perspective eye hand coordination three-dimensional thinking and imagination. Through our medical education, we didn't get any lessons for three-dimensional thinking. Eye-hand coordination is not bad in most of the surgeons, but you can improve it to do better surgery. Set your own rhinoplasty spectrum. I learned and started doing endonasal and then open, 
and please try to learn to send to a master to some difficult cases or the ones that you are not experienced enough. This is my rhinoplasty spectrum. I do most of the cases endonasally and a great majority will be done by non-delivery approach and then delivery. I used to do if this uh, tip needs some sutures and some modification, I do delivery. I open the nose if it's really twisted and if it needs grafting and I send some, I still, I did 10,000 uh, rhinoplasties, but I'm still sending some cases to others. Usually not masters, but my previous residents, but they have more time, they are more patient and they want to show themselves and they can do, they can spend a lot of time on those cases that I don't want to do anymore. Selfie, selfie is a new cause of increasing rhinoplasties. I believe you all know what is selfie. Our world turned out to be completely digital and almost all people use social media. Every single individual uses smartphones and digital photos. Millions of images are shared on site of, sites of Facebook and Instagram every single day. Before, when we want to have a photograph, we were going to a portrait studio and we were having well-focused, more formal and photographs taken by others from a certain distance. But selfie is just you look and smile and take your photo here and there, by the pool, behind the tree, whatever. And mostly from very close distance. So the nose appears on the photos even bigger than its original size. And some cameras a little bit deteriorates the figures. So before Facebook and after Facebook is really different terms for us regarding rhinoplasty demands. After Facebook photos, after taking selfies, the patients increase and they have an increased demand for reshaping their nose. Very hard to agree on relative concepts. Very cheap. What is cheap for you and for me? Very beautiful, very handsome. These are very difficult to understand and to come to a point. Patients usually, usually are asking, I want a good looking modern nose. What you understand is different than mine when the, uh, uh, from this description. I want a turned up nose, but how, how much, what is the degree? So it's better to sit together in front of a computer and do morphing on the computer, but it takes a lot of time. So uh, we wrote two papers on it. The first one is Genghis Steps for Preoperative Computer Assisted Image Editing. My son, who is working on graphics, is giving Photoshop lessons in the university, helped me to just set it stepwise. If you don't do it stepwise, you can spend three hours with a single patient. And the other one is post-operative, uh, pre-operative computer imaging before augmentation rhinoplasty. In Turkey, it's very rare, uh, very hard to find an augmentation rhinoplasty because we do a lot of reduction rhinoplasties. Most of our patients have huge humps like mine. Mine is not that huge, but there are much bigger humps in Turkish noses. 
I use Photoshop program. It's widely available and it's a complicated program, but you will use only the liquify effect so you can do it easier. I just described six steps for you. The first one is lowering the hump because patients usually say that uh, my only problem is my hump. If I will get rid of it, my nose will be wonderful. Okay, it's easy on the computer to just erase this hump and do step one. But when you do the step one, if you just, you, the nose seems longer. So we need to shorten that nose. This is the step two. Afterwards, the third step is adjustment of the tip projection. The tip projection may need to be increased or decreased depending on the pathology of the nose. Step four is perfection of the nasal dorsum. This step, initially we straightened the dorsum and the height of radix, the dorsal line, and the curvature is modified following the refinement of the tip projection. Step four is Way I can say that most of the people decide for step four. Step five is getting it more beautiful by creating a superative break. A superative break is not required by all cases, but it's aesthetically pleasing in some cases. Superative break differs according to taste but it usually requested in order to achieve a more westernized nose. In this step, a superlative break is created to provide two possible choices for the candidate, step four and step five. Step six will be the stopping point. The final step is uh, performed to help patients to decide to include either uh, in the fourth or the first step. When the patient see this result, they will typically choose, oh, no, 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 I don't want this because this is an exaggerated nose. So it helps patients to decide on uh, coming back to fourth or fifth step. If you don't do this exaggerated, step six, then they will ask more and more uh, ideas to do it and the, con the discussion will continue for hours. So this is a very good way to just stop the discussion. When they see this, oh, no, 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 I, want, I don't want this, let's go back. Okay, we are just coming back. I summarized the last three uh, steps. This is number four, almost the ideal one. Number five is more prominent, let's say more elegant, but a little bit artificial because in Turkey, we don't have such noses. And this is the exaggerated one to stop the discussion. I will go on uh, with my publications mostly. I have 35 uh, publications about rhinoplasty. I will give my email at the end. If you want to have those papers as a bunch, I can send you. I will be happy to send you. Triple cartilage combining suture technique in rhinoplasty. This is a modification of Tangin groove. I believe you know Tangin groove, and I will mention a little bit later again. This is the inner structure of the nose, the bony part, the cartilage, upper lateral cartilages. It's, let's assume that it pushes the nose downwards, pushes the tip downwards, and 
It's a long nose. The typical tongue in goo, the described one, is inserting the septum between medial pleuras and securing with sutures. My modification is similar, but in this uh, uh, suture type, the front leg of the suture is passing only the medial pleuras, while the back leg of the suture passes all three cartridges. In the classical tanging group, it's very strong, very stable, and sometimes hit the spouse when kissing. So this is a little bit flexible than that, but strong enough to hold the three cartilages together. This is the comparison of two together. This is also a new modification of a suture. When we are going, uh, when we are doing endonasal rhinoplasty, we usually start with an incision between medial pleura and the, sorry, between lower lateral cartilage and upper lateral cartilage. While doing this incision, I usually take a piece out, piece of cartilage, the cephalic resection of the lower lateral cartilage with the mucosa on it attached. Let's see, I made two incisions. Then with a fine scissor, I elevate just over the cartilage, not disturbing the soft tissue over it. And then cut out the cartilage with its mucosa attached. Many colleagues uh, were asked during the meetings that why should, uh, do I remove that mucosa? Mucosa is very valuable. Mucosa is valuable, but we will tilt up the nose so we don't need that mucosa anymore. Another good idea for me is when you just get out the hump unit, the bony and the cartilaginous part together, I put it on the nose and check if there is any remnant of both sides or if I need to go and take some more. So this is a controlling mechanism for the nose, for the, for the piece that I took out. This is the result of a, a standard surgery. The nose get a little bit shorter, but look at the eyes of her. She's very happy. I didn't get it too small because she's a tall lady. I put this photograph in order to remind that septum is very important. So we have to start with correcting the septum to our surgery and because we are uh, otolaryngologists we need to correct the septum very precisely before doing before thinking aesthetic procedures she wanted a straight nose and she looks happy at the end nasal tip is the most prominent and important part of the nose we all know that there are so many methods, sutures, grafts were described to alter the width, the projection, and rotation of the nose. So many sutures were described. Look, these are some of them. Actually, there are more. But everybody published in, a, in another uh, time period with another type of drawing. Some were used just white and black coloring, some just colored the figures, and the, uh, the, the figures are not same. If you're a new beginner, you cannot understand the difference. So my aim, my objective was to draw all figures again in the same style, 
and try to show the details to new beginners, the difference. I wrote a paper and the editor also liked my idea. So I redraw all tip sutures, techniques and indications, and it's published maybe 10 years ago. And I like this uh, paper very much because it helps many colleagues. I will summarize some of them. Medial crural fixation suture. What is the benefit of this suture? Equalizes initial projection of the domes and tip projection can be increased if need. The medial crural suture Medial cura suture is between. Uh, what is the benefits? What are the benefits of the suture? Helps more pronounced reduction of the interdermal distance, increases lobule size and lobule protrusion, greater strengthening of the tip. So, if you need these, it's helpful. Transnormal suture. What are the benefits used in convex lateral crura or flat dome? Very effective to flatten the lateral crura, decreases the horizontal contribution to the bulbous nasal tip control and narrows the nasal tip. Besides, if you want, reduces the angle between the domal and lobular segments of more, both medial crura, reduces interdomal distance, pulls the lateral crura medially, increases tip projection, and increases alar rim concavity. Lateral crural matrix suture. It's also very widely used in delivery technique or open rhinoplasty. I'm just summarizing all these sutures. Please learn them, but you don't need to do all of them. I believe you will like some of them and you will perform it even more successfully. So use the, the ones that you perform more successfully. What are the benefits to control the convexity of the lateral crura and to obtain a flat lateral press? Columella septal suture. Before, when I, during my uh, residency or first years, it was more popular. I don't see many people to using these sutures, but if if you do it perfectly, it helps a lot. Benefits are re-establishes the tip strength and integrity, helps to treat hanging columella, provides tip rotation and little tip projection, reduce the overprojected tip. Intercrural suture. It's bringing the domes together reduces the width of the cartilages of the middle crus. Similar to some previous ones, but there are different advantages and disadvantages. Tip rotation suture. This is an alternative <coughs> of my triple cartilage suture. To do the triple cartilage suture, you need to have a very long and straight septum to just secure the medial crurus of the lower lateral cartilage to the septum. <clears throat> if the septum is short, then you can use tip rotation suture. Excuse me. So you're just pulling up the medial cruras to reshape the nose. What are the benefits? The nasal tip is rotated cephalically, increase the columellar lobular angle, 
increases the angle of hip rotation. So if you need to do them all, this is the best way of doing it. Craniocaudal <clears throat> transdomal sutures. What are the benefits? Narrows the tip, increases protrusion. Lateral cura spanning suture. It is also widely used before. I'm not using it much anymore, but I don't know. You can use it. Please uh, remember that the noses that you're doing in the Eastern Asia and the Western Asia is different. We have stronger, thicker cartilages. Maybe you need to enforce the cartilages, but we sometimes just try to weaken them because we have stronger cartilages. We usually have more material, more bone, and more cartilages that we need. And you, because we usually do not add anything, but you sometimes need to add more grafts and you need to strengthen the, the cartilages. Lateral corolla spanning suture, what are the benefits? Repositioning and changing the shape of lateral crural from XTs and to correct asymmetries, ailer and internal wall collapse and over rotation of the tip. It's also sometimes very useful. Suspension sutures are still very popular because it holds the nose, it pulls the nose upward and keeps it there, especially in older patients group, you need to have a suspension suture to hold, to shorten the nose and to help the skin shrink a little bit easier. What are the benefits? Allows the nasal tip to be rotated while maintaining its appropriate position and offers a more logical vector of rotation. You can adjust this suture with the length. If you squeeze more, it will rotate more. Tanging groove technique. I just mentioned before the classic in the classical tanging groove, you just insert the septum between medial cruras and suture them securely. It's a very nice method. And when you do the result that you achieve on the operation table will last forever. It will not drop, it will not move, and but it will be sometimes very stiff. That's why I advise to use my modification. Benefits are, uh, it uh, corrects columnar show, controls nasal tip rotation and projection, maintains correction of caudal deviation, preserves the integrity of the lobular cartilaginous complex. Lateral plural steel. I like this suture very much, and you can also do it in endonasal surgery in your uh, with your delivery approach. This is just combining and bringing up the lateral crural. You're stealing the lateral crurus and just increasing the projection, increasing the medial crurus. It's a very helpful. If you don't know this, please try. What are the benefits? Increases nasal tip projection and rotation, narrows the nasal tip, leads to mild cephalic tip rotation. Usually it's hard to do it, but the main idea is increasing tip projection. A tip is positioned in a more anterior and superior location with these sutures. 
Now a new fashion, liquid rhinoplasty. I, I believe you also have many advertisements. Just come during lunch break and ha have rhinoplasty with injections and go to work again. How nice. It's a very good method. I agree, but to a limited patience. I have some papers and book chapters about it. I do on many cases. I also use treadle lifting on the nose. You just lift the nose. It works, but for a period of time. Pillars around the nose. I will also send you this paper. The benefits are to hide minor asymmetry. If you do the surgery and there is a minor asymmetry after it, you can just fill up one side to just keep the, uh, to just equalize both sides to correct minor deformities. And if you need an augmentation, you can do limited augmentation with these injections. You can increase the tip projection by just increasing a bit to the tip, but don't exaggerate what you're doing. You cannot do everything with this method. Try to stay on the safe side. Nose is the central feature of the face, so it's very important to change or modify its structure. Fillers are ideal for surgery-free rhinoplasty in some cases. They can enhance the nose bridge or smooth away depressions or hollows to create a smoother and more balanced appearance. It's also ideal to address small irregularities that may be evident after cosmetic surgery and rather than going surgery again. This is also a chapter from the book published by Springer, and this is suture lift of the, of the nasal tip. As I mentioned, in some cases, it works very nicely, but the result will not last forever. Let's say eight months. I usually say plus and minus two months uh, over eight months, maybe one year. It's a good method. Fillers are a new tool for improving nasal appearance. It's also a book chapter published by Springer. These are some samples. There is a gap between the bony and the cartilaginous uh, part of the dorsum, so you can just fill it, but stay on the dorsum. Another case, after surgery needs a bit filler here. It's so easy, and these cases are ideal for this procedure. Fillers if you want to use, only use at the dorsum, not on side walls, stay on the safe side. Use only hyaluronic acid and keep hyaluronic days in your pocket if you need to dissolve the hyaluronic acid. Never use, never use permanent fillers because if you need to take them out or dissolve it, it's impossible. But with hyaluronic acid, it's possible to dissolve it or take some part out. Now, I would like to invite you for these occasions. One of them is, as I told, I have 35 published papers on PubMed. If you can search them by the keywords CCNG and rhinoplasty. And if you want to have them as a bunch, please email me. I will be happy to send them all to you.
The second invitation is our Rhino Camp meeting. We will uh, do the 28th Rhino Camp meeting between 25th and 28th of May 2024 in Bodrum, Turkey. You can see the details at rhinocamp.org. And this is my email and this is my mobile phone. We will, I will be very happy if you'll email me for any questions, any advice. I use WhatsApp, but I don't know if you're using there a lot, but you can communicate with me on WhatsApp. I wish you all very happy days and I wish you all to reach the retirement chapter of your life in health and happiness. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for Professor Cindy. It's a really a comprehensive speech about the uh, renal plasty. Not only surgery, but also the liquid renal plasty. And during the speech, the Professor Cindy teaches us how to do the renal plasty, especially for the beginner and um, from the pre-operation and evaluation and the, the 3D thinking process how to plan the surgery before the operation. And uh, when we need to use the endonasal or uh, when we need to use the open approach. And uh, also the impact of safety before and after the Facebook. And uh, the, I seen the sixth step, the stepwise systemic guide how to use the liquefied effect in Photoshop program is good for us and uh, we, we can use it before the operation to try to have a comprehensive discussion with the patient. And uh, we, I, I think we all of us all really learn a lot from his speech. But unfortunately, during the time this fact, he is unable to be online now. So does anyone in attendance have any question or comment? we can relate the message and the response accordingly. Okay, if there are no further questions, I will now hand over the time to Professor Hall. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Tony, uh, for your uh, uh, moderating. And of course, I thank to uh, Professor uh, Semo Shinji uh, it's a really a wonderful uh, lecture on uh, rhinoplasty. I think uh, he really uh, prepared for that. And uh, uh, to me, uh, Professor Shinji uh, is a, uh, a genius. Uh, I'm doing head and neck mostly and uh, some of the skull base. And uh, he is doing, uh, you know, mostly on rhinology, especially the rhinoplasty. And how come a head and neck surgeon will get acquainted with a, uh, a, a rhinologist? I think, uh, you know, when we first met, we just love each other because, um, you know, I love his passion and uh, I love his, uh, you know, uh, his uh, altitude to uh, treat the life, to treat his life. And I, uh, I really uh, envy him uh, so much. He is a, uh, uh, he really enjoys life. He, he dances very well. He paints very well. And he is very popular among uh, all the girls. So, uh, you know, uh, he is uh, uh, one of my uh, role models and I really uh, enjoy uh, his uh, friendship. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I'm very feel very comfortable uh, to be uh, with him. And uh, so uh, thank you so much, Cindy, uh, for, you know, uh, supporting me and supporting for this uh, webinar uh, event. And now um, I'm going to, uh, you know, give you uh, a uh, announcement uh, about uh, the uh, upcoming uh, two uh, other uh, uh, webinar lectures uh, next week. Uh, one is from uh, Isaac Brook, 
and uh, he is going to talk about the uh, lab challenges uh, facing laryngectomies. That will be uh, next Monday. And on next Tuesday, uh, our friend Lin Chi Ming from Singapore, uh, he is one of my best friends. He uh, also had a neck. Uh, he is going to talk about the uh, surgical paradigm in treating uh, recurrent MPC, which is uh, uh, MPC is a very important disease in our region. So uh, I look forward to uh, your uh, participation again. And and thank you all again for uh, you know joining us for today. And especially thanks to uh, Professor Shinji, uh, Samuel Shinji uh, for your wonderful lecture. And of course, to uh, Tony Cho for your uh, moderating. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Professor Hall, and that concludes the meeting. Thank you, all attendees. Thank you.